والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله brothers and sisters in islam your nafs your soul the enemy that resides inside you is in your way to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you want to make it to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you must climb that mountain you must climb that mountain how can you do that you must do something called tazkiyah in english the word tazkiyah means to purify but what it means it means two things you must clean and purify you must do takhliya you must remove and then you must plant something you know once you want to plant a tree in the ground what do you do you want the earth to be ready for that tree you go and dig the tree and try to remove all the bad things out of that tree you make sure that the earth is ready for that tree what you need is you need to remove certain things from the nafs and at the same time you add the right things to the nafs two things that you must remove and these two things must be replaced with the proper things the first thing that you must or the first things that you must remove and please hear me with your heart to understand what i'm saying are certain traits of the nafs traits characteristics things that by the way you were fashioned with وحملها الانسان انه كان ظلوما جهولا you were fashioned ignorant you were fashioned unjust yes the evidence for ignorance والله اخرجكم من بطون امهاتكم لا تعلمون شيئا ان الله سبحانه وتعالى took you out of the wombs of your mothers and you don't know anything but at the same time he did what وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ But he given you the tools with which you can learn. Hearing. وَالْأَبْصَارَ Eyes. وَالْأَفْئِدَ Hearts. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So now, what you need to do is you need to remove ignorance from your nafs and replace it with knowledge. Again, I want to stress the fact that I'm talking about the knowledge that circles and talks about the three questions that you will be asked in the graveyard as soon as the people deliver you and dig a hole in the ground and put sand in you and leave you alone. The knowledge that goes around, who is your Lord, what is your deen, and what do you say about the man who sent to you? That's the knowledge I'm talking about. With all due respect, if you have a PhD in medicine, PhD in engineering, MashaAllah, may Allah bless you. But you know what? That knowledge will help you only until the graveyard. The knowledge that I'm talking about, the knowledge of the deen, the knowledge of the Qur'an and the sunnah, you must learn it. You must learn it. Otherwise, you will stay ignorant. You may be a guru, an expert in engineering, but yet you are ignorant in the Qur'an and the sunnah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is a trait of the nafs, ignorance. Now, you must remove it, remove it and replace it with knowledge. Zulm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Qur'an that mankind who bore the amana were unjust. Now you must replace the injustice, the injustice with justice. وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا By default, mankind likes to argue. Aimlessly. Yes, some people are like that. Now, what you need to do is replace this, leaving arguing, leaving arguing 
aimlessly. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam give you the incentive. Hadith Abi Umama, hadith fi sunnid Abi Dawood. Hadith Abi Umama, radiyallahu an, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ana za'imu baytin bi rabdi al-jannah liman taraka al-mira'a walau kana muhiqqa. I guarantee a house in the outskirts of paradise for someone who leaves arguing aimlessly even if he has a point. So now, if you have that trait of just arguing all the time, this is not a good trait. You need to purify that nafs. You need to remove this and stay away from arguing. Look at this. قُلْ لَوْ أَنْتُمْ تَمْلِكُونَ خَزَائِنَ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّي إِذَا لَأَمْسَكْتُمْ خَشْيَةَ الْإِنْفَاقِ وَكَانَ الْإِنْسَانُ قَتُورًا Be kind by default, by the way, he loves money. وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٍ He is in so in love with money. وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّا That you love money so much. Now, this trait must be replaced by spending this money in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew the incentive. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ The likeness of those who spend their money in the cause of Allah is like a seed that grows, ends up with seven ears. In each ear there is a hundred, you end up with seven hundred times than the seed that you placed. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O ye believe, أَنْفُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ Spend of what we have bestowed upon you. So now, if you're stingy, you have not purified your nafs. In order to purify your nafs, you must spend. Ya ibn Adam, O son of Adam, spend, I will spend on you. This is a sacred speech, hadith Qudsi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling upon you. Look at this. خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ مِنْ عَجَلُ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولًا By default, by the way, your nafs is hasty. No patience. Your nafs wants right away what it wants. Now, in order to purify the nafs, here is what the incentive. Here is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, here is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told you to do. At tuada taking your time, is praiseworthy in everything. In everything. Now, if you want to be hasty, if you want to rush, if you want to fulfill that need of rushing and being hasty for the nafs, why don't you do it in the acts of worship? إِلَّا فِي عَمَلِ الْآخِرَةِ so when it's time to pray, be hasty, rush to the masjid, go and wait for the salah. When it's time to spend, go and do it. الَّذِينَ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ They used to be hasty, they used to be rushing in doing good deeds. Ishad, brothers and sisters in Islam, these are traits that you may have. You may not have all of it. You may have just one, two or three. You have it in your nafs. In order to purify the nafs, you must remove that bad trait, that blameworthy trait, and replace it with the praiseworthy trait. Abdilil madhmuma bil mahmudi. This is the first thing that you need to do. The second thing, brothers and sisters in Islam, is your nafs is accustomed, is accustomed, your soul is accustomed to a certain sin. And your nafs demands it all the time. Now, this is, in my humble opinion, the most difficult war that you must wage against your, your nafs. Because what happened is, your heart sucked the love of that sin. And you, including me, and everybody has this. Now, you must strive to do, to do tawbah from that sin. You must remove that sin from your nafs. You must work hard. You must do tawbah as often as possible. Even if you end up making tawbah three, four, five times a day from that sin. Until one time, inshallah, if you are truthful, if you are truthful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you to get off that sin. Brothers and sisters in Islam, again, if the heart has sucked, the heart like a sponge, if your heart has sucked that sin and the love of that sin, like Bani Israel, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them, وَأُشْرِبُوا فِي قُلُوبِهِمُ الْعِجْلَ بِكُفْرِهِمْ They loved the worship of the, the, of the...
You know, they, they used to go around the, the, the golden calf and drinking and drunk and naked and just... They love doing that. They like that sin. They, their heart sucked it. Now to get rid of this, impossible. Impossible. Only those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy on. Your nafs must have sucked a sin. And it's, your nafs, is, your soul is il, so in love with that sin. Now what you need to do is you strive hard every single day to make tawbah from that nafs. Even if you make tawbah three, four times a day. Now, in order to help your nafs to come out of this, your soul to come out of this, you must engage your nafs in good deeds. I'm going to share with you a hadith, but don't take it out of context. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told about a man who prays the hajjud at night. And at the same time, he does a certain sin. You know what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? His tahajjud at night, one day, will help him give up this sin. One of the best ways, besides making tawbah, to come out of that sin, is that you engage yourselves in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to this hadith, and the hadith fi sahih Muslim. Hadith Rabi'ah ibn, Aslam, uh, ibn Ka'b al-Aslami. Rabi'ah ibn Ka'b al-Aslami. A companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who went out with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one of the battles, and he used to do something every night. Whenever the Prophet ﷺ is about to pray tahajjud, he used to go and prepare the water for him and prepare his wudu for him. Rasul ﷺ liked the uh, help of Rabi'ah, Rabi Allahu an Rabi'ah. And he asked him, Ya Rabi'ah Sal, ask me, O Rabi'ah, what you want. We know that the dua of the Prophet ﷺ is answered. You know what Rabi'ah asked for? He said, Ya Rasul Allah, O Messenger of Allah, أسألك مرافقتك في الجنة. I ask you to be your companion in Jannah. Look, listen carefully now to what the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told him. Look, look, what the Prophet told him. يا ربيعة أو ربيعة أعني. Listen to this. أعني على نفسك بكثرة السجود. Help me against your nafs, your soul, with a lot of prostration. With a lot of prostration. If you engage in acts of worship, Allah so إن الصلاة if you perform the salah properly, the salah, inshallah, will help you come from the fahsha and come from the munkar. Those are the two things that you must remove from your, heart, from your nafs, is the bad traits, place it with good traits, sins, remove it by tawbah, and get engaged in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do this, inshallah, you will have a second chance with your nafs. You see, we all have a second chance. And we need a second chance with our nafs to be in control of our nafs and get our nafs engaged in the agenda, which is the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought for it to be purified with. Otherwise, your nafs will take you to the hellfire. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.